building a DIY bench power supply. Come on in. Welcome to Maker's Digest. Today we are going to convert a computer power supply into a benchtop power supply. Computer power supplies are capable of providing a ton of current and usually offer 3.3, 5, and 12 volts. You can get different voltages out of them, but these are the three that I work with the most. I've used nice variable voltage and variable current benchtop power supplies, and we have one at the shop, but I find that I usually just set it to one of these three voltages and leave it there. And in the spirit of the channel, I figured it would be fun to make the bench power supply that we use here on Maker's Digest. And a word on safety. This can be a dangerous project. I consider this high voltage. I know my electrician friends are probably laughing at that, but getting inside one of these power supplies can be dangerous. So here's my disclaimer. Don't try this at home. I know what I'm doing and I understand the risks. I've been working with this stuff for long enough to know what I can touch and what I can't when I can touch it, and maybe most importantly, when I can't touch it. I can't stop you, but if you do decide to muck with a project like this, know what you're doing. And if you don't, find someone that can help you. Electrician friends are good to have. This is less of a tutorial and more of just a build video. There's some 3D printed parts, wiring the power supply, and mounting it to the bench. So come on in, and let's see how I put together my version of the ATX power supply. All right, let's dig in and see what we got here. I picked this power supply up from a surplus store. Uh, it was in a bin, like this gigantic bin of probably two or 300 power supplies. And I rooted around and found a small one. I know I don't need a ton of wattage. I just need something small that works. Uh, let's, let's see what we got. Looks like it's from HP some kind of small desktop. Uh, let's see, total 200 watts. Yeah, so this is a pretty small power supply by today's standards. Uh, it shows here on 5.08 volts, we've got 10 amps, 3.3 volts, 12 amps, and 12 volts, 15.5 amps. Way more than I'm gonna need for this bench. Uh, you know, I've worked with projects that use more than that, but we're going to be fine with this. Uh, let's see. So it's got a fan. I turned this thing on already, and it's really noisy, so I decided that I want to switch this fan. So we're going to pull this yellow wire here is uh, 12 volts, and we're just going to switch it so we can turn the fan off and on. I've opened these things up before plenty of times, and I know that many of these, like orange here is, uh, let's see, orange is 3.3 volts, and there's a bunch of them, and red is 5 volts, there's a bunch of those. In here on the PCB, it's just like a solder blob, or there's multiple connectors on the same bus. We'll just get rid of most of those and have one orange, one red, and then yellow is 12 volts here. There's a couple other colors that we will use, like green is uh, power on. So if we s short that to ground, the power supply will turn on. Gray is power okay. We can connect an LED to that. When the power comes on, the LED will come on. So just so we have a visual indicator that there is power. Uh, let's see, what other cool things can we use? That's about it. But let's fire it up and just see that it works and I'll show you how to jump these real quick. Plug it in. It doesn't come on. It's because we need that green wire. Uh, pull it low to turn the whole thing on. And let's see, I have an LED in here somewhere. Uh, LED, long leg goes to power. So that's gray, and luckily there's a black wire right next to it, so we're just going to pop this in like so, and then we'll take, happens to be green, but whatever, connect that to the green wire on here, and then let's find a ground, another black one right here when I plug this in. 
it's gonna get noisy, red light's gonna come on, and we'll get voltages out of these. Let's try it. So that's the on state, and that's what we wanna have. Let's see what we get. What do we got here? There's our 12 volts. And let's find our 12 volts over here. Okay, and a five, 5.21, let's go for a 3.3, 3.370. Those are the ones that we're gonna use. The first thing that we gotta do, let's crack her open and see what's inside and get rid of a bunch of this garbage wire on here because I really only want three, four, five, six wires coming out of this total and not all this extra stuff. Let's dig in. Get it out a little more. There we go. There we go. That's good enough. Now let's look at the business end of this. Let's see what we got. Big old blobs here where these uh, big connectors are. It's like all the 12 volt runs back to one of these here. That's the one we want. All the rest of these can kind of go. Now I'm gonna try to desolder some of this stuff. I just, I just want it as clean as possible. I don't want to cut wires and then just have them bare. And I don't want to bother with shrink wrapping everything too, or heat shrinking every wire that we deal with. All right, I've got all the garbage desoldered from here that I didn't want anymore. Here's the uh, carnage of that. This is like a 12 volt just a random for something. Uh, this, I think, was a fan tachometer. It was reporting something to the motherboard. It must be uh, how the motherboard knows what the fan speed of that fan is. Donate it. And these were all soldered in. Big, giant monster connectors. Took a lot of heat. Let me turn off this autofocus. Yeah, there you go. It took a bunch of heat. I had my good soldering station, my soldering iron, and then I broke out my old weller and I was going at it from both sides and you can see it's kind of big and blobby, but uh, didn't spread too much. It's all stayed where it needed to be. So here, 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 and here. I think this is uh, three, five, 12, and this is a big ground here. Uh, while I was 
doing that, I took the liberty and cut the leads that we're gonna run from the board up from underneath the desk, up and around to underneath the shelf. And while we're talking about that, I'll just kind of show you what that's gonna look like. So here's the panel that I've 3D printed for this. It's gonna sit under like this, so it'll be kind of at a 45 degree angle. And I have printed these brackets. So you can see it'll sit at an angle. I've got the main power switch here. We're gonna use these switches. Hole for the LED gonna go in here to show power status. Another switch to switch the fan on and off. And all my banana plugs. So I've got 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts. And that's gonna be awesome because I have my leads here that I use for power. And I've got a couple of different lengths and styles of these. But these are banana plug on one end, they can stack, which is great, and then alligator clips or, you know, the little syringe type things. Should be sweet. So that's what that's gonna look like. And, you know, we need to epoxy these on. Might as well do that right now so we can uh, let that set up while this is going. All right, I'll let that kick while we're working on the other part of this. Get rid of that nasty business. Okay, so we've got all of our leads here. Well, it's not all of them, but most. And I'll show you what I saw on the top. So. Much cleaner, got rid of all of that garbage. We've got the power on lead, which we just have to short to ground, pull it low, and it will turn the whole power supply on. This is the lead for the LED. And this I found is called Fan Command. And I did turn this thing back on just to test this to see if I needed to desolder it or not. And what I found is if this goes to ground, nothing happens. If it goes to like three volts, the fan runs much, much slower. And I did a quick search, didn't find much about it, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just tie this into a 3.3 volt and let it go.
All right. Well, I think that is everything that we want to have running out of here. Uh, it's been all night, so that epoxy should have kicked off by now. Let's get some zip ties and we'll manage that a little bit better here. Let's mount that back into the case. So we're all set and good on that side. Is up on? Sure. surface got our main power on and this is a uh, fan shut up the shut up fan switch let's wire up the switch first so we can turn it on and see if it turns on <clears throat> you know what I didn't put on here was any kind of loop for strain relief so when this runs up trying to come from this side which is easily fixable i'll just drill a hole in there but i can zip tie that down and get some strain relief in case you know the cat gets a hold of it There we have it, it is all wired up. Uh, I turned autofocus on, see if I give you a better look. Gonna focus here. Camera's far, I can't tell if it's focused, but everything's on. Let's turn it on and see if we get what we think we're gonna get out of it. Uh, how should we, oh, let's do this, just for fun. We'll use our, our leads here. Just clamp these on 
here. Let's see, can you see that? Yes, you can. And then we'll actually plug these in. And we'll make the fan be quiet. There we go, 3.366. Five point one seven twelve point oh three oh two twelve point oh two. I just realized I forgot to hit record on the audio recorder, so we'll see what kind of audio quality on this last fourteen minutes. I think much of it was uh Time lapse, anyways, but uh, it does put a little load on it. I might have to figure out a different solution for that. Well, there it is. In the next segment that we'll do, probably when I get back from setting up for the NorCal Robo Rumble, is uh, mount this up under here. And I'll have to get some fun camera angles for that, but, and we'll also mount this under the desk. So all we have is this interface available to us. There it is. Back in a bit. All right, well, I've mounted the power supply underneath the workbench here, and we've got everything all wired up and ready to go. So, I just need to screw it into the bottom in here somewhere. I managed to rustle up these little screws. This will work great, I think. Yeah, it'll be fine. Let's see. Got our test leads connected here. First things first, Let's see if it comes on. It did, and you can see that. If you can hear the fan, fan off. That's better. Let's see what we get. Three point three six five. You see that in my in frame here? Yeah, three point three six five. Five point one seven. Twelve point oh two. Nice. Well, there it is. I am pleased with that. Let's, let's label it correctly. There, that's better. We've got them labeled 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 12 volts, power, and STFU for a uh, silent temporary fan unit. That's what that means, because it makes the fan silent temporarily. And done. We've got a new benchtop power supply. There's a link in the description for the 3D printed parts on Thingiverse and links for the other parts that I used in the project below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you get notified when new episodes are available. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep making.